Hello everyone, welcome to this night's episode of Warriors of the Westfold. You may notice we look a little different than we normally do, and the reason is because we are talking about The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen, and uh, we were getting in the spirit, so we've got our hats and our winter gear and everything. Arwen, show off your, your cool eyeshadow. Yeah, I have eyeshadow. You probably can't <laughs> see it, but it's there. It's all sparkly white and stuff. <laughs> right. I forgot to introduce our, us. So I'm Lily Milos. I work for Middle Earth News under our news director, Arwen Kester. Hello, everyone. And our art and lit reporter slash Pinterest and Tumblr goddess extraordinaire, <laughs> Aloriel. <laughs> hey, everyone. <laughs> So yes, tonight we're talking Hans Christian Andersen, specifically the Snow Queen, though I have to confess that my geek pick is, is not Snow Queen related. But um, yeah, I guess um, this was the first time I'd read it. I read it a couple weeks ago when I knew we were doing this, and it, I had no idea this story even existed. What about you guys? I did not. I don't remember <laughs> the first time I read it, I, but it was... At least college, if not. I know I had a little book of Hans Christian Andersen when I was young. And I don't remember if it was in there or not. It may have mm. been. But. Yeah, so let's... Yeah, my first experience was probably Little Mermaid. And I was telling Arwen I love uh, the Little Match Girl. and But other than that, didn't really get much Hans Christian Andersen. So I'm excited to learn something new. But uh, I'll just start off and say I thought it was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> what about you guys? Way to break the ice. Ah, yeah. ha, 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 ha. Oh, how many how many cool puns can we come up with tonight, I wonder. I don't know, we are pretty cool. Uh, okay, I'm done. Mm. See? See? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it's a weird format. It's weird for a fairy tale. I mean it's it's Hans Christian Anderson, it's not Brothers Grimm. Right. And you know, he was he was experimental in a lot of his things. You know, there's the whole Blur Mermaid dies at the end, and, you know, mm. the Little Match Girl, like, the saddest story in the entire mm. world. Um, yeah, so, for those of you who haven't read it, it's a story in seven parts, um, and each part has a very obvious sort of chapter title, like you might find in a chapter book for third graders, which is nice. <laughs> that just tells you pretty much exactly what happens in each, uh, in each section. So, I don't know them off the top of my head, um, but we can put back and check. Well, I know that the first one... Um, yeah, I've got my so book. The first section, I should have mine too. I read it on my Kindle, my brand new Kindle, Ooh. and it was free. <laughs> I tried. I tried reading it on my Nook. I was telling Lily before the show, um, and it, they don't have a one. They don't have a free version. Two, any versions that I found were like only parts of it. Abridged, yeah, because so, it's a long story. Yeah, so I only got like little bits here and there. So I was very frustrated. I'm sorry to hear that you chose a Nook instead of a Kindle. I don't know, man. I, can't help you. I didn't. It was free, so oh, well, kind of, you know, oh, yeah. get what you're given type thing. Hey, beggars can't be choosers. I would have taken one, too. Yep. Um, I haven't find this book. So, well, either way, the first section um, relates, like, the legend of this mirror that's created by a demon. Um, oh, I'm in the next story. It's created by a demon, um, and it just warps everything that's reflected in it. And the demons carry it up to heaven because they want to see, you know, God and the angels reflected in it and how funny that is. And they drop it and it falls, you know, shatters into millions of pieces. And the story says that the pieces um, go into people's eyes and then they see the world askew and some people get the pieces in their hearts. And that's what happens to the little boy in the story. Um, but that's the first section is that little legend. And then the first uh, or the second section, I'm like swiping back, back, back. Um, <laughs> The section, second section tells of the two main characters, um, who are Kay and Gerda, little boy and girl. And they're all sweetness and light and best friends, and they live across the road from each other, and they share a little rose box between their windows. It's all very saccharine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, well, someone else want to take, so that's the little boy and little girl. Well, that's the second. Yeah, so it's during um, the introduction of the little boy and the little girl that at one point Kay gets the bit of mirror in his eye and it says it goes all the way to his heart and like half freezes his heart so he's totally mean and makes Gerda cry and then he goes off because he wants to play with the other boys in town and he hitches his 
sled onto like um, a sleigh going through town, and it turns out it's the Snow Queen. And every time he thinks about untying and like, oh, I should go home, she turns around and smiles and nods at him, and he's like, okay, just a little farther, until she like completely whisks him away. And there's a bit where um, it's super. I shouldn't say reminiscent, because this came before Narnia, but she's like, oh, come here, come under my cloak, just like the White Witch with Edmund, and um, she kisses him, and it was really cold, and she says, I can't kiss you anymore, or else I'll kiss you to death, and stuff like that. So then he, he's whisked away, and, and that's, that's the second one, I think. Did you guys see the image I used for... The um, this week's post oh, about yeah. the Snow mm -hmm. Queen. It's one of my favorite uh, illustrations. It's I just, I just you see it and I just it just strikes me like it's I saw it and I was just like whoa right away it was really cool. It, it is an cool. image of the Snow Queen, coolest thing ever. Um, and it has she's got him wrapped up in her cloak, you know, and he's kind of just like there, like <laughs> yeah, you you can't even see like all of his face. It's almost like right. he's being swallowed. Yeah, it's really interesting, but it's it's a really cool um, illustration, and I looked at many. <laughs> <laughs> I have one in my book. It's um, she just looks really unhappy. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they both look really unhappy. <laughs> is all I know. And uh, there's one other full color illustration of the hobgoblins carrying the mirror to heaven, and. Uh, yeah, the, the thing that struck me about this story, even from the beginning, is you can tell there's a lot of stuff that if we were alive at the time it was written, we would get the subtext and, um, you know, just the, the, the memes of the day. But since we don't, I'm like, sure, the roses and the grandma and yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so that's the next section that we should explain. And this is the most irritating section to me because they never right. go back and talk about it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, Gerda goes, uh, so Kay goes missing, obviously. Um, everybody's really sad. Um, and Gerda goes to the river where she thinks he's been drowned because he hitched his sleigh or his sled to her, her sledge. Um, and she asks the river, you know, did you take my playmate? And says, no, he's still alive, you know. And she's worn her red shoes to show him. And she says, if I give you the shoes, will you give them back to me? And she throws them in and she ends up in this boat, you know, going down the river and she ends up at the house of this woman. Third story, the flower garden of the woman who could conjure. That means she's a witch. Um, so the woman wants to keep Gerda for her own, so she enchants her and sort of makes her forget everything that she's been doing. It's always, it's like perpetual spring in her little garden. And Gerda goes through and talks to like all the flowers. At one point she realizes the roses are missing um, because the woman has made the roses sink into the ground so that she wouldn't be reminded because the, there was the rose box, as I said, between their windows. Um, so... She talks to all of the flowers, and, and, and Anderson gives each flower this stupid little story to tell. <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe it's not stupid. I don't know. This was always my least favorite part of the story. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, f I felt like Gerda, because they tell her a story, and she's like, okay, sure, but what does that have to do with Kay? Right. And then they're like, oh, nothing. And then another flower, and she's like, oh, how sad, but uh, my friend? And it just goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like, are you talking okay? They're like, that we're just telling our story. She's like, come on. So she runs, <laughs> she runs off. And then uh, section four, the prince and the princess. So this is where she meets the crows, mm -hmm. um, or the, the one crow, and he explains to her that he believes he's seen Kay go in and, and woo this princess. And she goes and finds him, but of course it's not Kay, it's, it's some other little boy, and um, she in tells my him book, the story. It says she thinks he's K, but it turns out only his neck looks like yeah. K. And I'm yep. like, that's that's a weird bit it was to only, recognize. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it says something about like his little brown neck. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And it's like, oh, it only looks like his neck. Like, how many times has that happened to me if I had a nickel? Like, every time I looked at someone's neck. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was else. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> so she tells them her life story, and they send her on her way with, you know, a coach and a and a muff for her hands and um, boots and the whole nine yards. And the coach is golden. Yes. When I first read oh. it, I thought, oh, hyperbole, you know, it's just painted gold. No, but made of gold. It, it is gold, yeah, because mm -hmm. that's really practical. Yeah, well, exactly. When, you know, well, it gets her set upon by robbers. And then that's the fifth story she's held in prison by the little robber girl. Um, they take all of her stuff, and the robber girl 
threatens to kill her multiple times. Um, <laughs> and Gerda spends a terrible night watching the debauchery of all of the robbers in their in their windy castle, They're all drinking and dancing around the fire and falling down. Um, but eventually, the robber girl hears her story and sends her on her way too on on the reindeer that she had imprisoned. And the reindeer goes to Finland and then to Lapland. There's these wise women that she meets, and eventually, to speed things along here. <laughs> she is guided to the palace of the Snow Queen. I yep. bet you. I bet you that reindeer is like the exact one that uh, shows up in the Hobbit randomly. He's like got a new life. <laughs> yeah, he's like see it. <laughs> the Thranduil, the moose that Thranduil yeah. rides on. That's why he's looking at everyone like, yeah, the what's best, up? The I have best a career now. I, I'm hanging I, with the elves. I that isn't canon, is it? Like, is there anything? Not. In Tolkien. Not that I'm aware of. Okay, I didn't yeah. think so. No. Then what in the world were they... Okay, <laughs> let's not get sidetracked. Let's not get sidetracked here. Okay. So, who wants to talk about the Palace of the Snow Queen? I, I don't it's feel really like cold. I'm prepared. That's <laughs> yeah, okay. it's, it's cold. Listen, did you do the reading? I did. I did I the did reading, reading I could. two weeks ago. And then I started reading it again today to bone up on it, but I didn't get to the very end, That's so okay. I'm just going from two weeks ago. <laughs> That's okay. I can try to be succinct. The Palace of the Snow Queen. She goes in and finds Kay, and he's assembling the pieces of what, what are supposed to be, I believe, the mirror. Um, mm -hmm. It's a big ice puzzle, essentially. And he can make the pieces spell all kinds of things. What he wants to do is spell eternity. Um, because then the Snow Queen says he will be his own master and she will give him the whole world and a new pair of skates. <laughs> so he's trying to spell it. Um, and Gerda goes in and she sees him and he doesn't recognize her, of course. And she cries and it, you know, the tear falls on his heart and thaws it out, which washes away the, the glass. And then he cries and washes the glass out of his eye. And everything's great and they escape because the Snow Queen isn't even there. That's what I was just saying to Arwen before the show. It's like so anticlimactic. She's like, oh, we better go. The Snow Queen's coming. And you're like, all right. Oh, it's time for exciting action. But yeah. no, she just decided to take a holiday. No, and... she was going somewhere else. Yeah. yeah she's like, oh, just see you later. Yep. Hang out some other time. Yeah, so then <laughs> they trace their steps back. They visit the, the wise woman in Finland and the wise woman in Lapland and um, skip over the witch who wanted to keep Gerda. They come back and everybody's happy. And there's that hymn that they keep singing and they're like, uh, they get home and they're like, they're adults with their children at heart or something. And they're like, oh, and then they understood the meaning of the hymn. Roses bloom and cease to be, but we the Christ child will see. Or we shall the Christ child see. I still don't understand I, I what don't. that's about. I was checking out the annotations uh, on Sir La Lune, because you introduced mm -hmm. us to that, L'Oreal. And there were a lot of annotations. Yeah. But um, the one thing about the roses were that roses symbolize truth. So throughout the story, I was trying to see that. I'm. It still doesn't help me make much sense of that hymn. But something <laughs> yeah. about truth. <laughs> yep. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I'm pretty much, you know, I mean, Hans Christian Andersen. He's like this big name, and his stories are weird. <laughs> it's just because we're not as familiar with them. Yeah. What the hell is wrong with this guy? <laughs> That's a lot of it. Arwen I... asks the probing question. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Let's get down and serious, okay? Like, no. Oh, man. <laughs> no, I mean it's an it's a it's an interesting story. There are a lot of little bits that we're kind of like, why? What's the purpose of that? We don't. I don't. Think, you know, no one will ever know. Um. And I think it's funny because it's like it's the you know it's all about the Snow Queen, but then there's so much in between all the Snow Queen. Thing? Yeah, it's called the Snow Queen, and really, she just kidnaps a kid at one yeah. point, and that's right. It. <laughs> I mean, you think about okay, like you know, the Lord of the Rings, kind of like you know, and then the whole thing behind the Lord of the Rings is the ring, you know, through everything, mm -hmm. and and so I was expecting, you know, Snow Queen, she's gonna be evil and she's gonna be everywhere, and she was not. I bet she has Sorry. a really cool palace though. Yeah, she probably does. This would be a good time to bring up this horrible adaptation of it I saw with Hugh Laurie as a bird. Oh. Named Cheeps. Cheeps, I think, was something. You know, he was like wow. sort of the like the narrator character. It was bad. It was really bad. It was on some <laughs> Well, that's sort okay, because it's going to get even crazier, because Lily has told me and informed me that their Disney has now got their hands on mm -hmm. the Snow Queen, and so they've decided that they're going to do Frozen. a... Oh yeah, Frozen. Mm -hmm. It's like they're going after like the Rapunzel. 
Yeah, right. Rapunzel was mm -hmm. tangled. tangled. So this is frozen. frozen. And here's the crazy thing. So I looked up some stuff on that. And it was, you know, I looked up, um, there's already some art out there mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. this. She looks just like Rapunzel. Rapunzel yeah, I know. Yep. Just like her. Exactly. Yeah. Blonde hair, blue eyes, everything was exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Even the facial features. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they made her a princess, not just a girl from town. You know, of course well, not. Because, uh, because girls you from know, towns are boring. Princesses. Girls from town are, yep. are boring. <laughs> we can't have our daughters just wanting to be girls from towns. I know. And then Gee. the next movie is going to be Frozen and Tangled. Find out they're sisters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... Long lost sisters. It's weird that they're saying it's based on the, the Snow Queen because it's it has one character called the Snow Queen. That's really about it um, because she's not going after her friend. She is cursed by her estranged sister, the cold-hearted Snow Queen. Eliza. And, yeah, right? and, or Elsa. Elsa, that's what it is, Elsa. And so she has to go on this perilous journey to get rid of the curse, so that's not like it. And the one thing I did like, the robber girl was my favorite sort of companion. I've been watching too much Star Companion. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite companion of all the, you know, women she meets along the way. <laughs> There's the prince and the crow, too. They're, they're men. Um, my co-host is, um, <laughs> is moving. Oh, is, is he moving? Yeah. Aww. Uh, did you see him? Yep, oh, there oh, there's movement. <laughs> I see baby movement. <laughs> <laughs> but the the thing in this um the the frozen thing is that there's a rugged rugged mountain man who's helping her, which is voiced by a cute guy from Glee. So you know there's going to be a romance, mm -hmm. and then there's an a goofy enchanted snowman and a mangy reindeer uh, with just one antler. So you're like, oh, right, Disney, they're doing the, right. you know, the mm. silly things. <laughs> I didn't see Tangled. I heard it was good. People said they liked it. Did you guys see it? Oh, yeah, I uh -huh. liked it. We have it. it. Okay. It's one of my, it's one of my daughter's favorites, <laughs> and, and we sing the songs a lot. <laughs> right, Lily? I, I sang one of the songs this morning, yep. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> are you'll understand. <laughs> she totally eyed me, and she's like, "Guess what I sang this morning?" <laughs> I was like, "Yes, I, yeah. Disney songs for the win." <laughs> oh, I know. I was just, you know, what I was looking at the other day um, this the Disney movie that I was much too old for that I still liked, uh, Hercules. Yeah. And I was like looking at the art, and I was like, "Man, some of those backgrounds are like really pretty." <laughs> and I was mm -hmm. feeling really, really dorky about the whole thing. So I was totally no, just Hercules. Yes, yeah, uh, right. One of our reporters, Myla, was is really into Hercules, and she's been making a lot of comments. So it got me thinking about it, and I was looking at some of the artwork and the way they did Hades, because people do Hades lots of different ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but I like the music in that. And uh, Frozen Two will be a musical. As, as yeah, good. yep. <laughs> as I heard, there's like this song. I I saw. I was looking up information. You got me looking, Lily. <laughs> and I mean, I know I have to because this is like mom research, you know. Because my daughter's right. gonna be like, Mom, I must go see this. <laughs> I must sing every song five thousand times <laughs> a day. And um, I want the princess dress. That's gonna be totally it. I know it. But um, <laughs> no, we but, all yeah, want the princess and, dress. And there, do what? <laughs> Don't we all want the princess dress? Be fair. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's true. I do. Every I time really I go do. to the store, I'm like, so where's the adult section? Because <laughs> you know that they have, that. you know they have days in a Disney store where you can bring your kid dressed up as a princess or a prince, and like they ha they get special stuff. Ooh, that's that. cool. Yep. <laughs> Just uh, snap some tassels on uh, your kid's shoulders and be like, he's a prince. Yeah. What free stuff do we get? <laughs> that's what counts. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, we always go for like the cheap Target versions versus the actual Disney Store princess dresses because they're like twenty dollars cheaper. Mm -hmm. No, well, Ridiculous. when they're too small to care, why not? Right. Yes. And my daughter will be too small to care for the rest of her life with my budget. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. No. Nope. Anyways, I mean, you know, it, you know, it's it's like a Disney thing. They're they're gonna take them. I don't know. I'm like. I'm half yes, half no on some of their their um, adaptations or, you know, like their versions. Uh, like, okay, for instance, Tangled, if we go back to Tangled, right? Um, it, it is a really, really 
like the movie that you watched, there's a, there's so much um, emotional manipulation that Mother Gothel, the you know, oh yeah, the evil person, um, outright does to Rapunzel, and you know, like you're you're looking a little fat. She says in one of the songs, mm -hmm. she's like getting a little chubby, mm -hmm. and like all these things that kids, you know, are like they're not gonna get. <laughs> It was a little mm. heavy, I thought. Some of the, some of the, you know, the things in it. But is then it on it's Netflix the same. yet? Probably not. They don't do this. You know, I feel like it might be. I'll look it up for you. I feel like it is because uh, Netflix just passed. made a deal with, um, with Disney, so they have a lot of Disney stuff now. They do. They do. Uh, I don't know if Rapunzel's on there. They, it used to be. I don't know if it still is though, because I think Brave is is on. We're going to be. I don't know. It's loading. Oh, you're right. Yep, you just have to get the DVD. It's not on Instant. Yeah. Mm. It was, and I don't now have a I DVD think plan. The DVD you don't have a one. I don't. I don't get the DVDs from Netflix anymore. I'm way too cool. Yeah, for neither, that. Do I. Yeah. neither do I. <laughs> and by cool, I mean cheap. <laughs> and by cheap, I mean poor. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. What's <laughs> going on back there? What nonsense is that? Oh, He's just so cute. Baby noises. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, so I mean, you know, it's gonna be like it's already completely changed. What was I watching mm -hmm. the other? Oh, I thought, oh yeah, because yeah, you're right. Netflix just did something with Disney, so there's all these Disney movies on, and so there was uh, Pocahontas. I wanted to go watch Pocahontas with my kids because they wanted to watch it, and uh, I was just like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, that one <laughs> this, was. This... Oh, oh, crazy! Yeah, yeah it was a wild. Was... I had the it piano is, music is... book. Nice. <laughs> it is the one that they tried to bury. I'm telling you, it is bad. With good reason. It's mm -hmm. just, it's not very good. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, not good. I, the songs I was aren't like... good. The nothing. Oh, good. except for "Come but On," yes. just around the river bend. And "Colors oh. of the Wind," which I played for my senior recital. Nice. <laughs> but the, like the jokes are horrible, and and then you've got. Okay, here I am watching with my children, and you've got the, um, you know, the English settlers singing about how um, savages, savages, da, 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 da. and I'm like, oh great, thanks for teaching my kids that term. Appreciate that. Right. I'm like, my kids yeah, are like, why are they called that? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, because when they're really little, they don't get like those are the bad guys, and so the reason they're saying that is because they're bad. We don't agree annoying. with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Exactly. Yeah. They, like you know. Oh, yeah. Anyways, but yeah. So um, I don't know. We'll see. I'm I'm a little bit annoyed that they're that it's just another blonde princess. It yeah. really bothers me, especially mm -hmm. because um, she's you know. It, well, it doesn't say anything about her being blonde, but you know, you could get that she's maybe Eastern European, and so maybe wouldn't be blonde. <laughs> <laughs> she's just a copy. Of, yeah, but we know. I mean, she's a copy of Rapunzel. She's just yeah, it doesn't matter because it's just you know, unoriginal, nonetheless. Anyway, so let's bring it back to the Snow Queen. Right. Snow um, Queen. Like, well, you know what we should do? Um, do we have any Snow Queen specific picks that we could talk about? I do. I have some Snow Queen geek picks. Let's do it. Pull them out. So um, the first one is an icicle necklace. This is just something I thought the Snow Queen would wear, and I thought it was really pretty. So it's just um, a necklace, and it's got five little glass icicles coming down. Looks like you're wearing icicles. I thought that was cool. So we'll have a link in the description after the show. And then the other one was these snowflake stockings. They're They're kind of pale, but then they have a black black snowflakes so it almost looks like you have them tattooed on your leg and uh, again I thought they were cool I was going with the let's go crazy with the snow stuff as evidence oh those are honey. cute so yeah I like those we'll have those in the description and Good I know old Etsy. Uh, yep I know it's always my go-to for geek pics really there's no reason for it not to be this is great <laughs> and I know yours are specific to the snow queen yeah, well, this this one that I just remembered definitely is it's actual ice jewelry. Ooh. Um, yeah, here, wait, let me put it in the notes so that you can see it. Ice jewelry. So it's jewelry actually made out of ice. Um, I found it on Pinterest because that's my go-to. Yeah. <laughs> if you have Etsy. Um, yeah, they have like a, a ring made out of ice. It's like a big lump of ice. They have necklaces. 
It's just like ice cubes. Wow. All around. Yeah, like actual ice. It's crazy. Um, and I may have to bow up for a second. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but also, I wanted to bring up this book, um, Breadcrumbs, which is based on the Snow Queen, and that I hear is like amazing. I haven't read it yet. Um, maybe everybody else has, but I have heard from multiple people that it's just the most incredible book. It's a young adult, you know. Um, oh, cool. Just fabulous, fabulous stuff. Okay. I will be right back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that looks Leave cool. With a less crying baby here. <laughs> Um, my geek pick this week was actually when I was looking for um, something to go, you know, on the post, and I found that beautiful illustration, um, which is the cover of a book, by the way, which is just beautiful. If you have a chance, go to our website, wheresofthewestful.com, and go to show news, um, and it'll be on there on Snow Queen. And um, but when I was looking through, I came across a website that. Um, it's actually, she is a costume designer for a theater, a particularly large theater, like well-known theater, um, and they did the Snow Queen, they did like a, a play, and she made this crown that was just so cool, and it kind of reminded me of like Narnia with the Witch Queen, which, the witch, uh, now I'm getting all confused, the White Witch, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, it was just like, you know, like s these icicle looking things. Oh, that's um, that, cool. That, you know, kind of. It was really cool. <laughs> ah. Actually, now I'm thinking about the White Walker guy, the king. I feel like he has something like that. I feel like he does um, too, right? Doesn't he? Yeah, right. Well, this, anyways, she, yeah, she did this really cool thing, but she did it out of like plastic, but it looks like ice, and it's really cool. I was like, mm -hmm. man, I want to do that. But anyway, that she had a step-by-step cool. step process on her website of how to make it, which I thought was even cooler. Oh, so, that's really um, cool. I don't have the website with me, but I will definitely put it on the notes because it's awesome. Very cool. Okay, yeah. so I had to look up. The White Walker King doesn't have a crown, but the way his face is, he has sort of like bits of ice coming out from his face. So I bet that's where we got that idea. Oh, uh, Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just always imagine him with, like, all kinds of craziness. <laughs> yep, because he's scary. I know I know he's, like, your scariest. <laughs> he is. He is. He absolutely is. Yep. Definitely. Well, why we have some time real quick, and I know because mm -hmm. um, I know we've, um, we can dive more into um, the Snow Queen when Alluriel gets back. Oh, except we have baby. <laughs> we have baby viewage. Look, everyone. Cute. Oh, oh. <laughs> He's so cute. Oh my gosh. Look at that. He is so cute. cute. Oh my goodness. You just. Oh. <laughs> I, I can't remember if. <laughs> Never mind. Arwen, Arwen has gone into that special place. <laughs> you probably want to be like sniffing his head right now and everything, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. I want to totally be kissing those little cheeks. They're so cute. Oh. I love baby <laughs> cheeks. He's all like, what? He's what like, are you doing to me? Mom, what's going on? These people are weird. Sorry. I like narrating babies. <laughs> I thought, okay, so L'Oreal put this uh, video of him on her Facebook and of how he sort of babbles, you know, baby babble. And I love how she talks to him because she's like, oh, really? Yeah, I can understand your concerns. <laughs> you know, and she talks to him <laughs> like he's an adult. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. The best part is when they're like, you know, they start to like talk back. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like, yeah, da 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 da. And they'll be like, ah. And he's <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Ah. And they know that like they're supposed to respond, so they just start talking. Mm -hmm. Best, best ever. <laughs> they're so cute when they do that. But, anyways. All right. So, what are we going to do while L'Oreal's gone? While L'Oreal's gone, I was going to bring up next week's episode. Um, yes, because we've got so a big idea. episode coming. And I think it's important we should kind of let everybody know what's going on and um, give them a, a kind of rundown. I think we should. Okay. Yeah. Like okay. Okay, you go. So. <laughs> So next week, Valentine's, the most cheesiest day of the year. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, 
yeah, so it's just fun to be silly because it's, it is cheesy, you know. So, anyways, we thought, we're a geeky podcast. We like geeky things. We need, to, we need to see, like, vote for, like, the geekiest couples ever. So what we did was we thought of pretty much every single geeky couple there is, and trust <laughs> me, there is a huge list, and uh, we're going to put them in categories, and we're going to kind of narrow them down, and then on the show, we're going to talk about, like, oh, let's see if I, can I, can you remember some of the categories, Lily? I'm trying to think. Well, I, there's one I wanted to talk to you about, actually, because I filled out my sort of ratings of what I thought of them, and I realized I might have been thinking about it differently, so a category was geekiest couple, and I was thinking, like, the fandom was the geekiest. But I think you mean, like, geekiest together, don't you? So I may have to change my vote. Yeah, I did. I thought I was thinking geekiest together, like, you know, like, in their style of who they are, their right. character. How they talk to each other and stuff Right. Like that. Yeah. Right, so I'll have to change couple. that one. There's geekiest. Sappiest, I thought, was really good. And... Uh, I think we were starting to all agree. I don't. I probably shouldn't give it away, but there was one couple, and the more I thought about it, I was like, "Yeah, they take the cake on Sappiest Couple." <laughs> <laughs> um, most likely to fight. Oh yeah, that one. Uh, there were a lot of them. <laughs> that made sense. There were right. Yeah. See, yeah. I'll get. I'll, I'll give a couple away in that one. Okay. Yeah. Um. The uh, one of the couples in Most Likely to Fight, Kermit and Miss Piggy. <laughs> that was a good one. When I said um, that we had thought of all the couples in the craziest of the world, mm -hmm. oh, we did. Yep. Uh, the one I liked best was Jon Snow and Egret or Egret from uh, Game of Thrones. Because yes. she's always saying, "You know nothing." You Jon know Snow. nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, th their whole relationship is an argument. Sometimes it an is. actual it is. fight. So yeah. Um, and there were some other good ones. So, yeah. Um, what else? Oh, Most Beloved. So those are sort of the, the cheesier ones. You know, like, oh. And then uh, Most Annoying was in mm. there. So uh, yes. I, I feel like we should spoil um, Cersei and Jamie Lannister. They are up for their contenders for the Most Annoying Couple. And Anakin and Padme are also contenders. So... Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. We shall see. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. But yeah, there's all kinds of, of ones, and we're gonna so we're gonna vote, and we're gonna have Myla and Rachel, our uh, the uh, Middle Earth News new reporters. So um, we're gonna have like crazy fun next week, and we're just gonna be you know lots of laughs, lots of fun, lots of goofing off, you know, <laughs> lots of geek, too. So. Definitely a lot. Yeah. I know. I'm excited. Well, because there were some, uh, my, my favorite fandoms pitted against each other, you know, uh, Princess Bride and Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and just, and Doctor Who, because Arwen, I'm almost to the end of season four right now. I'm <gasps> like crying all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I have, okay, I have... so if you are, then you would know <laughs> what this means. Yes. Why'd you have to do that? <laughs> Sobbing. Uh, I need to like send you a package of tissues. Oh man, so I um like I don't want to give stuff away if people aren't and, and this isn't our Doctor Who episode. We'll do a, a second follow up Doctor Who episode. Uh, I'm I'm kind of bummed that I wasn't watching these at the time. I mean, it's nice to be able to watch them in like marathon viewings, but um you know not to be a part of it at the time. I feel like I missed out on all of this geekiness because I love it. The problem is though, and uh, this was <laughs> going back to our Valentine's Day episode with Geekiest Couple, I think I chose uh, the Doctor and Rose as my top geeky couple because I thought, you know, we're just talking about the fandom being the geekiest and every time I try to tell my husband what just happened on the episode of Doctor Who, <laughs> it's <laughs> like, and there was this thing, you know, just, just trust me, this, it makes sense, you know. <laughs> It makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I just realized there was one we left out. I think we talked about, but really, I don't know if there's good um, contenders compared to some of the rest, but we didn't do Back to the Future. There's the doc and the school teacher, Clara, and then right. Marty and Jennifer. 
but I don't know. I don't know uh, if they could really beat out any of the other couples in their categories. Mm. We'll have to. Well, we can add them to the list and yes. see. Yes. And if you, the listeners, watchers, um, however you're seeing this or listening to this, um, if you have ideas, let us know on our page, warriorsofthewestfold.com, or on YouTube, or tweet at us, or Facebook, or whatever. Get in touch and let us know who you want to see. Let's see. Because there were some of them that I didn't know. I have to admit, I just put question mark because I don't watch Battlestar, so I had no idea what to say for for Battlestar and uh, a few other Oh, yeah. Things. Well, you know, Starbuck and Lee, they're always fighting. So it was <laughs> so they're, they're in the, the fighting, most likely to fight, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I never watched Buffy. I mean, like a few episodes, but I have no idea oh, the, really? the story arcs. If you want you know? an ab workout, which, <laughs> like, you laugh constantly. I mean, like, you will have a six-pack of abs, like, after watching that show, because oh, you're just you like... Go. What were they thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the outfits, the the lines, the oh my gosh, it's just hysterical. It's <laughs> very hysterical. Nice. Well, the monsters you know, you got me into Doctor Who, so it could happen. Well, you know, I'm one of those people that you start something. I like if I start a series, I feel like I have to finish it. Uh -huh. So you just be like, no, I've got to finish it. I got to see. You know, just say I saw it. Just finish <laughs> it so I know what happens. You know, and um, <laughs> <there's Jack. laughs> and um, so yeah, I, Buffy was one of those, and I just felt like I had to finish it out, so I yeah. did. But um, it is so hysterical, <laughs> and wow, it's just wow. Oh, I was oh, seriously a good friend about. of mine, and I we literally just like watch it to laugh. <laughs> We're like, hey, you know, if you had a bad week, let's watch some Buffy because it'll make nice. us laugh. My brother and I used yeah. to do that with Saturday afternoon shows on, like, the WB. Those yeah. Were like, oh, it's just so bad. Anyway, do, do, we, so have bad. You, do we have you back, Aloriel? Are you there? Oh, sort of. Sorry, okay. It's there. No, that's cool. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> yes. So. We didn't want to miss out on any Snow Queen talk, so we talked about our Valentine's Day episode coming up oh, next week. Good, good. Um... Oh, so so we talk. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, where did I oh. put my book? Here we go. Um, oh, what? Oh, I wanted to share my fashion pick because I think this is important, right? Oh yes, do <laughs> muffs, right? I just link to any random thing that I found, but this one is great because it has like a neck strap, a card wheel, because it like goes around your neck, and you know? <laughs> like you're gonna drop it, your hands are in it. Um, <laughs> But so Gerda, one of the gifts that Gerda gets, really, yeah, one of the gifts that Gerda gets from um. Uh, from the Prince and Princess is a muff. And I was just like, man, those things are so, like, cozy and warm. And, like, why don't more people use them? I, I guess it's because we don't ride around in sleighs or carriages. <sighs> and we have to have our hands free to drive and stuff. But, man, I think we should bring them back. I'm with you there. I bought one <laughs> once at a thrift store for, like, 20 bucks. And nice. Nice. I, I love it, and it's it's yeah. so, it's totally big enough. You could put some warm chestnuts in there, keep your hands warm. Warm chestnuts, look at you. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's very, uh, <laughs> very pastoral. Yes. Yeah. It's also. funny. I, I always say bucolic, and my husband makes fun of me. He's like, that's your favorite <laughs> word, bucolic. Bucolic. <laughs> <laughs> like your uh, bucolic scene behind you? Yes. Uh, yes we don't actually have a Christmas village. We just have a little lake. I didn't put the swans out and all the trees. So I think that's okay. What is wrong? That is so awesome. <laughs> I gave up a long time ago ever having to be able to have one of those things in the background because, <laughs> like, especially at Christmas because it's just like, you know, kids. It's like either in their mouth oh, yeah. or broken. So <laughs> we don't have those. everything's like up, <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> Decorations, they go up. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky. Okay, I'm trying to, th to remember some bits about the Snow Queen. Because there were so many just random bits, little nuances that you're like, I wonder, I wonder what that had to do with anything. Um, we didn't talk about at the beginning how there's a bit where there's, um, there's like, they talk about bees and how the queen bee always stays in the middle and then there's the snow queen or the or the snow queen bee 
come the children at the beginning of the story? I was very confused by that. Can anyone offer any clarity? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that was just like a weird segue, right, to introduce the Snow Queen. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. Like, the question is, can she change size? Because it, like, she right. comes with those on your window, and that's what makes all the... She likes Susie Snowflake. <laughs> like, really right. tiny, and I, I don't know. I really don't know. She's the queen of the snowflakes. Well, then, you know, she does have that snowflake army at the end that Greta has to fight through with the Lord's Prayer. Should we? Can we even talk about all of the religious overtones in this story? There were a lot of religious yeah. overtones. Yeah. Because um, well, there's, the, the there's the hymn. Yeah, I mean, you get that sort of like a product of the times. Even um, in Little Match Girl, there's, you know, mm -hmm. like when a star falls and uh, things like that. It has to do with heaven. And, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, and I just turned to a page, and it says, they, the children took each other by the hands and rejoiced in God's bright sunshine and spoke to it as <laughs> if the child Jesus were there, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I'm trying to remember. There, there was some other bit that was actually, like, a whole part of the story was, was contingent on the, the Christianity aspect. And I, I know there's it. the one part where um, Kay uh, is in the sleigh and he tries to say the Lord's Prayer, but all he could remember are the multiplication tables. <laughs> yes. Like, oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, that part was funny. Darn that yeah. science. Yeah, so he can't remember the Lord's Prayer, just multiplication tables, but then he wants to show off for the queen, and so he tells her how he can do multiplication, including mm -hmm. fractions. Mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and it's like a big deal, and I thought, oh, sure, the boy bragging to impress the lady. <laughs> but then it's brought up later with Gerda. It must be very impressive that he can do his multiplication tables, even fractions, because she's <laughs> like, oh, you know, and Kay's so clever, he can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the deal is with them. Yep. I never but, figured out. Are they brother and sister? They can't be. I don't think they are, right, because the point is that they're... They're friends. They're, they're they like keep the neighbors. Friends. But then at the end, they say yeah. they go home to their grandmother. That may have just been right. like, I think it's just his grandmother. But but then again, it seemed like both of theirs, the way that they would right. treat it. I never really figured out their relationship at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, that's Not a good clear. question. Not clear. It's, it gives you a slice of life into things at that mm -hmm. time. Because there are just little things that he says, like they would warm up the coppers or you know like a penny yeah, the and then put it on the on the glass to warm it up and make little peepholes mm -hmm. and and you know the kids attaching their sleds to sleighs going through town things like that you're like oh that's so cute slice of life but at the same time it just I felt like it really rambled all over the place <laughs> it does yeah agreed yep I'm trying to think what else there is Oh, I was reading on Sir La Lune that there is some kind of a folk tale about uh, a woman who could kiss you to death. And so that idea of kissing you to death, which the Snow Queen says to Kay, was sort of like a legend at the hmm. time. So I That's thought, true, because she says, if I kiss you one more time, kiss you to death. Yeah. It's interesting. I did not know that. It's weird. Like, what is what is the point of this story? <laughs> There's really like no point. It's just so random. It's a well, fairy tale. Yeah, I like that the girl saves the boy, but uh, there were I, I read a, a book of fairy tales once, and it was all the fairy tales that you don't really hear anymore. That the Grimm's brothers didn't pick them up, and they're not uh, you know considered part of fairy tale canon anymore. But they were all these fairy yeah. tales that were old, but the girls were kick ass in them, and. It's like, man, I wish there were those fairy tales. So at least this one made it, you know, where the girl helped save the guy. Um, but still. Yeah, that is a redeeming quality about it. I wish, like I said, I wish um, it, it's hard to get. I mean, for me, it was really difficult to. I couldn't find a mm -hmm. full version of the story. Um, I even looked online. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Had some, you know see if I could get it there but it was really difficult to get and and then like you said it's you know it's just it's it's got so many parts and there's it just kind of it's like a wave <laughs> yeah. just all kinds of you know like 
and we're here, but we're there, but we're here, we're there. It but, kind of yeah. has that Scheherazade factor of like, you know, the the little chap the seven different chapters. It could easily be a okay kids, you'll just have to hear what happens tomorrow. And so <laughs> it's not super attached to the old story. It has the same general um, you know, the characters are some of them are the same, but you know, it's just sort of like the next installment, almost episodic. Mm -hmm. Right. It's true. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Yeah, as far I mean, I haven't read extensively of his, but of, of the ones that I've read, that's this is the only one that's this long and rambling. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're all kind of weird because they're not grim, and that's what everyone's used to. Right. But this is the only one that I know that's that, like, crazy. Yeah. So you guys didn't get what you expected from the Snow Queen. Is that what it comes down to? Well, I guess I would, largely, like yeah. what Arwen would say, there was very little Snow Queen in it, so mm -hmm. I had certain expectations, and... Yeah, not they yeah. weren't met, and I wouldn't say I was disappointed that there wasn't more Snow Queen, but just the story was very convoluted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot more about all the other characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel I I mean I didn't I didn't I don't feel like I could really say because I didn't get to read all of it, mm -hmm. and, you know, experience. But I mean, in hearing what you know you guys have been saying, yeah, it doesn't. I I'm disappointed that there wasn't more of the mm -hmm. Snow Queen. Well, related, my geek pick, uh, like I said, isn't uh, from the Snow Queen, but it's another Hans Christian Andersen, and I love the little match girl, and you're right, it is sad and tragic, um, but I, I just love it, and I, for a long time, I really wanted there to be a movie, and I, you know, cast the perfect people in my head, <laughs> and then uh, Disney came out with the, I think it's Disney and Pixar, came out with this short film called The Little Match Girl, and I I'll put a link in the description. And I think it was 2005. It was supposed to be in the 2006 Fantasia that never came to be. So I think now it's um, like a bonus feature on Little Mermaid. But I saw it back in 2005, 2006, and I was like, that was perfect. I'm good. There doesn't have to be any other movie. Because like, even the tiniest details from the story, the fact that she loses her shoe at one point, um, I, I was just like, yes, oh, they put it in there. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. So uh, the quality is really crap. I think it only is 240p, but if you can find a better version or if you own The Little Mermaid with the bonus feature, you should check that out too. So Disney actually did a good, they did. A good it's, uh, version there, huh? Yeah, it's really good. Uh, and it's entire, there, there's no spoken word. It's There's music over it, which is... Right, for Fantasia. Yeah, yeah it's um, emotional fascism, really, because you're like, oh. <laughs> but yeah. it's, it's lovely. <laughs> emotional fascism. <laughs> I stole that from a friend of mine. I was That's like, something for the party. Yeah, yeah. totally. <laughs> That's awesome. We should start up a band. <laughs> so, what are your favorite Hans Christian Andersen stories, ladies? I still like The Little Mermaid. The yeah. original. Little Mermaid. That one's sad, too. I mm -hmm. always thought that was sadder, for some reason, than The Little Match Girl. Really? A lot of, a lot yeah. of these fairy tales, even the Grimm, I mean, you know, Grimm stories aren't, right. you know. Mm -hmm. There's grimness in the grims. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh, I forgot. The Princess and the Pea is a Hans Christian Andersen. Um, oh, I didn't know that. I would be a horrible princess because I <laughs> would certainly not notice a pea under the mattresses. That's for sure. No, definitely not. I'm trying. Oh, and Thumbelina. I oh, was always Thumbelina. really weirded out by Thumbelina. Thumbelina. I was very uncomfortable with like the, like the frog that wanted to marry her. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know what it was, but even like I mean, I was a little little kid, and I was just like, "That is not right." Did you watch yeah. the cartoon? <laughs> no, I had a little tiny book at that point. It was like this big, but it had like a bunch of the stories in it, and that was one of them. I was just like, "That's wrong." It's just, you know, against the laws of nature. I don't, I don't <laughs> it made me really, really uncomfortable. Like more, yeah. like more so than it should have. I don't know. That's what I remember about Thumbelina. <laughs> I'm trying to look at all. I'm looking at the table of contents. I know. I was looking at the table of contents in my book too. Um, and most of them I haven't read. I was reading though again in the annotations in Sir La Lune. He did the story called the Red Shoes, and I guess red is supposed to be the color of sin. And so when she throws away her red shoes, it's showing that she's staying pure, and that the red shoes has more of that motif in it. 
Oh, and the Emperor's New Clothes, that one's Oh, famous. yeah, I do like that one. Yeah. I like that one. And he, oh, and isn't he, um... Oh, shoot, you know, the Tin Soldier with one leg? Yes, yeah, that oh. one, the Steadfast Tin Soldier. Steadfast Tin Soldier. Yeah, oh, I have oh. a brave Tin Soldier in here. Oh, and the, the Ugly Duckling, of course, that's an ugly duckling, important that's one. Point. Oh, that's right. Hmm. But yeah, now I kind of want to read know. more of them. <laughs> yeah. Because I feel like so those other really ones are cool. more, like, they're they're ple more pleasant of a memory than the Snow Queen, because the Snow Queen kind of leaves you, like, but the other ones are, like, an actual solid story. Yeah. Um, this is really cool. One of our one of the people in the chat room says, This is so weird. I didn't know your topic tonight, but we just found a copy of this story in our attic. So, how it's fortuitous. <laughs> oh, that's cool. What copy? I wonder what, what... Is there an illustration or an illustrator, I wonder? Ooh, um, good question. If you mm -hmm. hear that and you want to answer, go for it. <laughs> yeah. Mine, this is the inside cover of my uh, Hans Christian Andersen book. It's like all colorful and has all the different characters and stuff. Oh, wow. It's very exciting, but mostly it's not very illustrated, just a few for each story. I'm a big fan of um, Arthur Rackham and Edmund Dulock. Those are my like, mm. top two fairy tale illustrators. I mean, In fact, that was going to be one of my picks is the Edmund Dulock. Uh, illustration of Gerda and the reindeer when she kisses him and he's crying a big tear. I'm a big fan of his um, his color palette. And if you don't oh, here know what we it go. Is, you can look it up. <laughs> <laughs> the 1968 edition with illustrations by June Atkin Corwin. There you go. I'm not familiar with that one. I, I'm going to have so many illustrators to Google after the show. <laughs> <laughs> what are, we talking? are you talking about awesome. Dune in the chat room? What is going on over here? Oh, okay. Oh, so tonight's goodness. beer and popcorn movie of choice is Dune, which, I mean, that's total geekdom right there. And, that yes, is. I have seen Dune. But I was telling Viking, one of the hosts of Beer and Popcorn, that Dune is interesting, but the children of Dune, so much better. And there's only one reason for that. Why is that? <laughs> I haven't seen Children of Who's Dune. in it? Who's in it? Oh, There's really? Some hunky guy, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and 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 he and he's like he's got these eyes like they they're blue. Two of them. Not oh, normal blue, but okay. like really blue. <laughs> two of them. <laughs> two of them. <laughs> they have two yeah. of them. Yeah, he has two of them, and they're blue. Um. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm trying to think of his name. Oh gosh, why can I not think of his name? Oh, he played um. Everybody, <laughs> everything. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Googling. You know that it. guy? Yes, I can complete everybody, everything. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to find his name. You can talk, oh. talk some yourself. <laughs> uh, Arwen, you just got a huge smile from my co host here. Like, oh, no, and I missed it. Again. I don't right. I I missed it. If I can Where point it you? down, I wonder if I'll do it again. Hi, do you see her? Oh, no. <laughs> this is like why people tune in, of course. Hi. No one cares. <gasps> There we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> my mom is going to be so jealous. We Skype all the time, and I'm Hi. like, Mom, you can't see like what's on the screen. It's it's uh, it's proven that if you talk like 10 million pitches above what you normally do, <laughs> babies will smile. Yeah, it's, I know. I was always true. like, I'm not going to be one of those people like that's so stupid. And now I'm like, it makes them smile. I will do anything. Like, I will dance around with no pants on if I have to. Like, I don't care. I do not care. I'm like, he's my other I'm amazing. Mama there, dear. I heard that there's some psychological reason for that, that kids relate to the higher voice. This has been years since I read about this, but something about the high voice, and so it's actually good to talk to kids in the high voice. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know. It just happens. That was just funny. Sorry, I didn't mean to hijack the show. James Sorry, everybody McAvoy. who tuned in. Why oh. can I not think of his name? Mr. Tumnus. Come yes. on, James right. McAvoy. He's like the main guy, week. and he's, ugh, yeah. That's who we should have talked about last week. I liked him. He, he was, was good. Mr. He, was, Tumnus? he was a good Mr. Mr. Tumnus. Tumnus. He, yeah. was. he was. He was. I have a friend who actually looks so much like him, and we all went to the midnight <laughs> showing of Narnia, and so we. his nickname is now Mr. Tumnus. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> 
Wait, you have a friend that looks like him? We need photos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll have to see about that. I was going to say, he's a little young for you, Arwen, but that's okay. Because he's younger than I am. So and I'm the youngin on this show. I don't and have babies or anything. You might be a little married for him, too. Yeah, there is that. <laughs> yeah, you, you can always, you know... Imagine. Details, details. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, that was one thing Milo was talking about. Um, our reporter who's going to be joining us next week was that she very rarely has age-appropriate crushes. And uh, I imagine it comes <laughs> from um, watching Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. You know, I was an Aragorn girl, and I think Viggo Mortensen was born the same year as my dad. So <laughs> not appropriate. <laughs> so I can't really blame Milo for those. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome very cool very cool well um, well, we have five minutes so we can casually go through like everything that people can check out because usually we're like running through it <laughs> right <laughs> but, okay oh so do we you want to do a Zazzle store yes you should buy something Arwen we have a Zazzle shirt. shirt I'm wearing yeah I don't know if you can see okay wait Ta -ta -ta -ta. see I move my hair Warriors of the West Vault, and then okay, wait. It's oh, gonna happen, exciting. guys. Ooh, Yay! There she is. Can you see it? Yeah. <laughs> say something. Say something while your back yeah. is turned, so that you show up. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what you have to do. I am saying something while my back is turned, so that Perfect. my shirt shows up. Are you seeing it? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we have a Zazzle store. We have shirts, and um, all kinds of other stuff. Buttons, pins, flare, because you can never have too much flare. <laughs> no. um, and, yeah. Um, and then you can follow us on our website, which is warriorsofthewestful.com. And that's where we have, we keep you up to date with our show news, which is which episodes we're going to be doing next. With our videos, you can find all of our videos there. And our podcast, if you just want to listen to the audio, you can find it there, or you can find the audio on iTunes. Just search for Warriors of the Westfold. And definitely, if you're a podcaster or love podca listening to podcasts, um, definitely leave us a review on iTunes because it helps us see our stats and everything like that and see how we're doing. So that would be a big help. And as well, we've got our... Uh, YouTube page, which we are live on right now, a YouTube channel, and that also helps leaving us uh, liking our videos, things like that. Subscribing, all that good stuff. Yep, and then of course we've got Facebook. We are Warriors of the Westfold on Facebook, and then on Twitter we are at Westfold Warrior. I think that's everything, though I have to admit, you guys, since Middle Earth News now has a Tumblr and a Pinterest, I was like... Does Warriors of the Westfold need to have a Tumblr and Pinterest? I mean... I don't know. There's so much geeky awesomeness out there that... <laughs> oh, it's so hard because I will, you know... Middle Earth News is Tolkien, you know, so I'm, I'll, am i like, find all kinds of stuff, but I'm like, ooh, geek, happiness, <laughs> and then, um, and I'm like, oh, I can't post that on Middle Earth News. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you need a personal account. Yeah. I... Oh, yes, because... I have so much time yeah. already. <laughs> yeah. for, when, for your downtime. <laughs> when I first started, because I, I made one for Pinterest for um, to, to like all of the Valentines that we did on Middle Earth News, and <laughs> I told my husband that day, because I was just pinning all sorts of things, I was like, this is the best video game ever. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it is awesome. It's like Pokemon. I'm like, yeah. I just keep adding and adding and adding, and I'm like, I don't have all of the pins yet. Yes, got to catch them all. I know. Awesome. <laughs> and then the Pinterest. best, the most satisfying, is when you see someone has repinned something. It's like, yes, <laughs> my people like what I like. I'm cool. <laughs> it is very validating. Very validating. Pinterest is validating. <laughs> Obviously, I need to get into Pinterest, because everyone else is like, yeah. It's genius. I mean, it's visual bookmarking. Like, it's perfect. You know, it's it's like the perfect bookmarking system. Yeah, I really like it. it I really can't is. tell you the number of times already where I'm like, oh, there's that thing. Did I pin it? Good, because I want to go back and look at that. Yeah, because so. then you can go and look <laughs> at your board and it's all like inspirational. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. And you can, you listen, the, here's the other thing. You can have secret boards. Like if yes. you're planning a surprise party and you have ideas or like, you, you know, gifts that you want to get people or whatever. 
It's very or you have an interesting. You have like a James McAvoy board. <laughs> yeah, you can have that. Yeah, it could be your secret board. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> she's only saying she's joking, so we all just I know. forget about it. Yep. I know. <laughs> the secret James McAvoy board. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, well, well, we are about at time. So, did anyone have anything else, Hans Christian Andersen, Snow Queen related, or anything about next week's episode? Valentine's Day next week. Next week episode. Yep. Be Get ready. Join well, us. It'll be fun talking about all sorts of geekdoms, but everything and anything fun. are open. Yep. If you are like us and you like. Let's do something fun on Friday versus like <laughs> sitting at home and eating waxy American chocolate. Then hang out with us because <laughs> we're so much cooler than yucky. Oh, Valentine's American Day! Wax chocolate. I was like, "What is this chocolate waxy American chocolate? What is this?" <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. It'll yeah, be fun. Yes, I'm very excited about this. So yes, do you have yes. anything to contribute? Anything, Jack? Got anything to say? Jack and the Beanstalk? Jack and the Lantern? <laughs> Nothing? Nothing? He's like, I'm focusing on keeping my head up, Mom. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of hard work here. I'll go like yeah. this, and he'll probably he'll see this. Yeah. Ooh. Check our one out. The reason that people tune in. <laughs> see us talking about babies. Yep. Awesome. All righty. All right. Well, yes, well, thank you for we'll joining us. We'll see you for us. Valentine's Day. Yes. All right, that is Aloriel and co-host. <laughs> All right, and Arwen. Oh, bye. <laughs> and I'm Lily, so thank you so much for joining us, and hopefully we'll see you next week for Valentine's Day. See ya. Hasta luego.